Um, these are all, I think these are all from the first, could be from the second assignment as well, but at the end of the day, all the stuff is basically the same stuff. Pink? Nah, let's go lime green. All right, cool. So you measure 24 turtle weights. Okay, sample size. I'm pulling out the information as I read it. Find that they, ah, okay, they have a mean weight of 76 ounces. Okay. The mean of them, that's a sample mean, is 76 ounces. Now, I'm going to read this two different ways and I want you to see the difference. Here, assume the population standard deviation is 6.4 ounces. Population standard deviation is sigma. And the population standard deviation is 6.4 ounces. Not every question is directly going to give you sigma. Not every question is going to tell you population. I'm going to read this two different ways and I want you to tell me whether I'm given or giving sample standard deviation or population standard deviation. Here's my first way of reading this, okay? I'm going to change it a little bit, so listen. You measure 24 turtle weights and find that they have a mean weight of 76 ounces and a standard deviation of, uh, of 6.4 ounces. Notice that I said they have a mean weight of blank and a standard deviation of. Does that standard deviation come from that sample or does it come from the population? This is a big part. This is major, okay? Population. They, coming from they. So I say I have a 24 turtle weights and find that they, this is a sample, they have a mean weight and they have a standard deviation. The sample has a mean weight of this and a standard deviation of that. That means that I'm talking about the sample standard deviation. I'm talking about S versus you measure 24 turtle weights and find that they have a mean weight of 76 ounces. The standard deviation for the population is 6.4 ounces or all turtle weights have a standard deviation of 6.4 ounces. Note the separation of the standard deviation from the sample. That is a population standard deviation. You know, here, here they directly say population standard deviation. But if there's an all, the standard deviation for all, that's a population standard deviation. Or if they say population standard deviation, population standard deviation. Or if they give me sigma directly, they are telling you the population standard deviation. So um, some of the situations are going to say S. I'm not, I haven't even gotten there yet. I probably have to do that tomorrow and focus on that because that's a whole different inter, uh, like distribution. But I want you to be able to determine whether you're given a population standard deviation or not. And that's a big deal because it's going to come back in hypothesis testing. Basically, the rest of the semester, it is extremely important because that tells you whether you're doing, in this case, Z or T. Okay, so if I'm dealing with a mean, and this goes along with hypothesis testing too, when you get to that. There are three situations there too. Get used to it. Now, if you can. I'm not even doing proportions yet. That might be next week. And then these will come back next week too. You're doing a confidence interval for a mean. You have to decide if you know the population standard deviation or not. And if you do, then you go Z. And if you don't, then you go P. And either it's directly told you or not. This one directly tells me, but it doesn't tell me in my notation. So, all right, well, I have to put it in my notation. But if I have a, a sample size and I talk about their mean wheat and I talk about their standard deviation, that's a sample standard deviation. I'd be saying S, which would change, you know, whether I use T or Z, which, again, tomorrow probably I'll have to do T stuff. Um, now, this is just asking, based on this, what is the maximal margin of error? This is asking me for E. What is the margin of error? And you could do it associated with a 90% confidence interval. Your confidence level is 90% for the true population mean turtle weight. Now, 
two ways you can do this. You can actually use your formula, which requires you to find your critical value. Or you could use my little trick where I get it from the confidence interval, which is probably what I'm going to do because I'm going to give you guys the confidence interval too, just to practice that. So, sigma is known, which means I'm going to go z interval since I'm finding a confidence interval. So, um, that's in stat and over to tests. All the interval stuff is in stat and tests. You need to scroll past this. This is a mistake everybody makes every semester where they use this instead. Anything that ends in test corresponds to hypothesis testing. You're not doing a test. You're not running a test. We're not there yet. We're doing intervals. So it has to end in interval or int. And you're not using all of these interval things. You're, all, you're using either 7, 8, or A. We didn't even do A yet. That might be next week. But for us, for this particular question, Z interval, because I'm dealing with a confidence interval for a population mean, and I know sigma, I know the population standard deviation, so Z interval. Um, now, I don't have data, I don't have a list of values for this case, so I'm gonna scroll over to stats, okay? Because when I scroll over to stats, it asks me directly the statistical values that are given. And I have them, because they do give them to me. Notice that if I use Z interval asks me for sigma, I want to show you something. If I go to stat and I go to test and I go down to T interval, I want you to see that it asks for SX. It basically tells you which to use when. So if you forget, go into it and look at it. If I'm using T interval, I need the sample standard deviation. If I'm using Z interval, it asks me for the population standard deviation. It tells me, and uh, that is known to be 6.4. And X bar in this particular case is given to me, whereas in the last one I had a list of numbers, but this one's given to me 76. And my sample size is 24. My C level, my confidence level, they tell me they want 90% confidence interval, so 0.9. 0 0.9, whatever, calculate. <clears throat> Let me screenshot this. And I'll put it in here for your notes. This is my output. Um, again, it's an interval location. Now, um, the question doesn't ask me for the interval. That's OK. I'm doing it for practice anyway, but I'm going to use it to find my margin of error because that's the method that I'm choosing to do this. I can go through the formula if I want to, but I also want <clears throat> your confidence interval, CI confidence interval, okay? Um, the 90% confidence interval is either in this notation, 73.851, 78.149, that's an interval notation, or <clears throat> the population mean is between 73.851 and 78.149, this is your try inequality form. And then the last form, remember, asks if I want it this way. The next question asks for this, um, which means I need the margin of error. But I have the sample mean, which was 76, plus or minus. Now, to find my margin of error using my confidence interval, I take the high end, 78.149, subtract the low end, 73.851, and divide by 2. Okay, this is my trick to find the, uh, the margin of error rather than going through the formula. So 78.149 minus 73.851. I forgot to put parentheses around it, so I'm going to press enter first and then divide by 2, which is 2.149 approximately. So my margin of error, this is what I input here. Okay, and this is how I represent that notation. And this one says, sorry, round to two decimal places, so let me follow instructions and do that. Because that's not rounded to two decimal places. And I always check, right? I always want to make sure I'm rounding how they ask. So 2.15 when I'm rounding. Um, 
Um, I'm gonna do this one as well. You know, note the input is a little, it's basically the same thing, but notice this is saying blank plus or minus blank, this one. This one was simply saying plus or minus blank. That's how it's looking when you're inputting it. But this is asking for a margin of error, and this one is asking for constructing 95% confidence interval. So now I actually want the confidence interval. I did it for the last one just because to show you, and I used that to find my margin of error rather than me going through the formula and doing the you know, critical value. That's just the, the process I chose. Um, but this one asked me for the confidence interval. And just for practice, I'll show you the margin of error too, just in case, right? Because any problem could ask for any or all, a piece or all. And this one just asks for the, just give me the confidence interval. In this particular notation, remember, it could be any notation. You know, um, this problem from Jody. Oops, made that big. Okay, hold on. I'm going to copy and paste it if I can. So the plus or minus, what is it called? It's called. Um, Um, I don't think there's a direct name for that, the plus or minus. It's just a way of representing the interval. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of separating. You could say it's in it's in the it's in the, in the form of where is it the point estimate and the margin of error. <clears throat> See, this one that Jody gave me asks for this. Basically, it's asking for a uh, try and equality form. It's not really asking for the form in a particular term. It's just showing it, right? But it could ask for any, um, any one of these particular notations. All right, so cool. I have time to do both of these. I'm going to just do it a little faster this time. Um, all right, so you measure 25 watermelon weights. I have a sample size, 25. And every time I read this, I always want to think about whether I'm doing a confidence interval for a mean. So I always, assuming that like I know I'm not in a specific section, I always, you know, look for what type of confidence interval I'm finding first. I want a confidence interval for a mean. And given that I want a confidence interval for a mean, then I want to determine if I know the standard deviation for the population or not. So now that I know it's for a mean, I'm looking to see, ah, look, they directly give it to me. Okay, so they have a mean weight of 46 ounces. The sample mean from the sample is 46, but the population standard deviation is 11.3. Based on this, construct a 95% confidence interval. This is my confidence level for the true population mean watermelon weight. I don't really have to do, I'm going straight to my calculator. Now, they don't ask me for the margin of error. I'll probably do it for kicks, just for practice. But uh, this one I'll do on the app just for the heck of it. Right? So on the app, let's do the app. Same thing, stat should look the same. Over to test and see all the stuff. I want the interval stuff because I'm dealing with an interval. And I will do Z interval because I know the population standard deviation. Notice again, it asks me for sigma. I don't have a list of values, so I'm going to have to go up there. Or I can get to stats. Because I do know the stats, and this is how it shows. So sigma is 11.3. Mean x, right, that's your sample mean, which is given 46. N, my sample size, is 25. And my C level, my confidence level is 95%. This is a typical 1.95. And then this is giving me this 41 point, and how does it want me to round? Round to two. Okay, so 41.57 is the low end, 41.57 when I round, and then 50.43. Oops, sorry. I'm not inputting that here. This is 
is not in that location. This is not. We need to find the margin of error for this notation. This is my actual confidence interval. 41.57. Now, because I'm going to use it to calculate my margin of error, I'm probably going to take a couple more of this. 0 0.05 and then 50.4295. Okay. Again, if I'm doing it in this notation, 41.5705 and then 50.4295. And <clears throat> This is in the last notation where it's the point estimate, what I'm using to, to basically approximate <coughs> the population um, mean. This is called a point estimate and the margin of error. So the point estimate, they gave it to me. I'm using 46 from my sample. But this is my margin of error, x bar plus or minus e. And my margin of error, I'm going to find from my critical, my uh, confidence interval. Take the high end, take the low end, subtract them, divide by two. So if I'm using this, 50.4295 minus 41.5705, and then enter because I forgot to put parentheses around that, and then divide by two, 4.4295. And then if I run into two, 4.4 here. So they are indirectly asking me for that last notation because they're saying find the confidence interval and they're giving me blank plus or minus blank. This is your sample mean plus or minus margin of error. Uh, professor? Yeah. Well, to find the margin of error, you have to first um, get the z interval to subtract the high and low, then you divide, right? Uh, yeah. If you're doing it, if you're finding the margin of error with my method, yeah. If you're looking for the margin of error with my method, otherwise you use your actual formula. That's a preference. I prefer not to do, go through finding a critical value, <laughs> but you could use the, the actual um, formula as well, or you know, if you want to find the margin of error that way. I just think it's a little faster to go through the confidence interval and then find it. And like I said, typically when I when I lecture this stuff, like it's like I always show formula first just for understanding, but nobody cares. <laughs> I'm always like talking to the air, like okay, what's the calculator trick? So, you know, um, I'll do one more and I'll find the margin of error for this too, just for practice, okay? So you measure, there's another example, but see the notation, how they're representing it. So you, you measure 23 randomly selected um, weights. So my sample size is 23 and find that they have a mean weight. So the sample mean of 34 ounces. Now, I really want to know if this is population standard deviation. They tell me, assume the population standard deviation is 3.6. Sigma is 3.6. Construct a 95% my confidence level. CL is confidence level, 0 0.95 confidence level. And you know what? <clears throat> this is not asking for this, but I want to show you if you, you know, want alpha, just to practice this one more time. It's the complement of that. They don't ask for this. I'm just doing it for practice. And if you ever ask for alpha over 2, right, 0 0.025. And if you're using the formula, then you need to find your critical value, which is an inverse norm. And you can actually stay consistent because it's a z-score. So inverse norm. And then if you don't have the graphing calculator, if you have the app, you have to do the one minus here and then zero one. And if you want to go through the formula, right, you got to actually uh, second bars, inverse norm. This is just for practice. This is one minus 
0.025. This is assuming you guys don't have this option here, so you would have to tell it, you know, left. 0, 1, because we're on a standard normal distribution curve, so my critical value is 1.95996, so approximately 1.96. Then you have to go back and plug it in to the formula to find your margin of error. This is doing it by hand. Um, <laughs> um, my calculator trick, I'm going stat. Down to Z interval because I know the population standard deviation. And stats has to be highlighted because I know the statistical values. I can actually input numbers here. Sigma is 3.6, X bar was 34, N was 23, and my C level is 0 0.95, 95% confidence level, and then calculate. And this is my interval. So I can straight go here, 30, and put it in white so you can see it better. So my low end, this is already, um, this is already, you know, basically, this is what they asked me for, 32 point, round to two places, 32.53, this is a point, and this high end is 35.47. <coughs> now, um, again, just for practice, 32. Um, just for practice, if you're asked for margin of error, 35.4, so I would take the non, the non um, rounded one to find if you're asked, you're not asked for it here, but if you are asked for it, just for practice, again, 35.471 minus 32.529 and then divided by 2, 1.5. 471. Just because, you know, you ask me if you're doing the formula in case you want to do the formula, this is the, you'd have to take critical value and multiply it by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. <clears throat> this is if you want to, I mean, technically I'm done with this problem, but this is if you're doing it this way. The square root of and I get, I should get the same thing, 1.471. This is, this part is if you're using the formula. And then, once you have that, if you're using the formula, you have to take x bar minus e and take x bar plus e. You guys tell me what you like, formula or graph and calculator trick. 23. Wait, what is my calculator trick? <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> but every time I, I mean, you know, it's not hard <clears throat> in the sense that, uh, you know, it's just following, you know, formulas, but it's just extra, I feel. <laughs> Oops, did I use the wrong thing? Oops, yeah. 34 minus, but you see, I, you know, I'm going through it to show you get the same thing. If you want to do it, by all means, enjoy. 32.529, and then this one is 34 plus, just to show you where it all comes from. <laughs> and then 35, but I get the same thing, right? 35.471. And this is if I'm using formula, using formulas by hand, this is what I will do or by hand. <clears throat> I have to go through the process of finding the critical, oops, I don't know why that happens. I have to go through the process of finding the critical value in order to use the formula to find the margin of error. And then I would add and subtract the margin of error from my sample mean, which is my point estimate, to get the interval of values. And I would say that I am 95% confident that the true population mean textbook weight, if I'm doing interpretation, just to practice that too, um, we are, because you might have to choose which one matches. 
highly possible. <clears throat> we are, how confident am I? I don't know, where's the confidence level? 95% confident that the true value of the mean weight of two, oh, two population mean textbook weight. True value of the, I forgot what I mean. <laughs> true population, that the true population mean textbook weight is between whatever his value is, 32.529 and 35.471. Is that pounds? Is it ounces? Ounces. Well, it can't be pounds. I'm crazy textbook. But this is my interpretation. Some of them you're going to have to choose. You know, which one is your interpretation like we did here? Or actually, this is not choosing the interpretation. This is inputting. You know, we are this confident that blah. This is taken from the problem. You know, what are you finding? Constructed 92% confidence into for the average time it takes the species to divide. Well, we're 92% confident that this species of bacteria takes on average between this many, whatever in this case, hours to divide. Um, <laughs> construct a 95% confidence interval for the true population mean watermelon weight. Well, I'm 95% confident that the true population mean watermelon weight is between 41.57 and 50.43 ounces. So just to practice this one, construct a 95% confidence interval for the true population mean textbook weight. Well, I'm 95% confident that the true population mean textbook weight is between 32.43 and 35.47 ounces. So um, just to practice, I think this one asks, see this one is, there's another interpretation, I'll talk about this tomorrow, because this one I think, this is an example using T interval, we'll come to this tomorrow, see, um, and we'll talk about the interpretation that I talked about today, but then another kind of question you could be asked in terms of interpretation. Um, I'll probably just leave this up and use this tomorrow, this is for tomorrow. So I'll talk about the you know, student T distribution, and then like T interval and stuff tomorrow. So